Well, good morning, Morro Bay. Today is Thursday, September 21st, and I'd like to call to order the monthly meeting of the Tourism Business Improvement District. For the record, the time, according to my watch, is right about 9 o'clock on the nose. Very punctual. Establishing a quorum of our board members present today, from my right to left, we have Taylor Newton, Maggie Jurin, Sean Green, Stephen Allen, myself, Aaron Graves, and it is a tentative attendance for our Vice Chair, Charlie Yates. We'll see if he comes in. But we still have a quorum to proceed forward. Now I'd like to open the microphone up for any public comment, and that could involve items not on the agenda you'd like to address, or items on the agenda, either way. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Janice Peters, resident of Morro Bay, and on the board of By the Sea Productions, our very own homegrown live theater company. Uh, we have been in operation since February of this year, January actually, but our first show is in February. And we have been surprisingly and gratefully <laughs> very um, accepted and successful. We have, for each of our main shows this year, which we are just in rehearsal for our final one, we have had at least one sold out performance, which means 60 people and lots of performances with 45 to 50 people there. So the response has been fabulous. We are at St. Peter's Episcopal Church, which the council gave us a permit for in their parish hall. And our next show is A Member of the Wedding. It opens October 20th. It's about a 12-year-old girl trying to find where she belongs. She doesn't have a mom, so her guide person is their black housekeeper and her eight-year-old friend who's a little boy. It's, it's a very charming thing. It's Carson McCullers' classic you may be familiar with. And that runs through November 5th. After that, we have one more show this year, A Reader's Theater of the Shop Around the Corner, which is another classic. Next year, we are doing five full productions and three readers theaters and the full productions range from comedies, Exit Laughing, a very serious one, Love Alone, The Murder Room, which is a farce with a lot of slammed doors and secret passages of Mice and Men, the classic, and Anne of Green Gables will be our holiday show next year. So we are publicizing our shows in Ticket, The Bain News, The More Bay Life, and The New Times. We also are, um, have an ad in the chamber uh, publication, brochure, whatever it is, uh, and we pass out our flyers to every hotel in town that will take them. Some of them don't want them, but most of them do, because it's a wonderful thing to suggest to guests when they get here what to do if they've already seen the movie at the Bay. So uh, what we wanted and hoped by giving you this in advance is that when you are doing promotions for the city and for things for the tourists to do, please add live theater to the list because we have it now and it's going to be, as you can see, a lot of weekends next year. So there's a lot of things that we can promote to our visitors and also to our residents, which is really exciting. So. That's what I'm here for. I think you already got my suggestions about your billboard, which you're going to be talking about later. So thank you very much, and have a nice meeting. Appreciate your public comment, Ms. Peters. Board, do we have any questions for her? I would just like to state thank you for your contribution to the community. And you're right, that's exactly why our guests are coming here, is for all of these, these uh, experiences we can offer them. Is there any further public comment? I just want to say thank you for bringing live theater to uh, Morro Bay. Really, it's awesome, Janice. Thank you. Yeah, especially Anna Green Gables. I just love that story. Thanks again. And for the record, Mr. Yates is in attendance now. Nope, no problem. Uh, action item A on the meeting agenda, consent agenda. We have no items on the consent agenda. We'll move on to B, business items. The first one is a receive and file of the TOT reports as was submitted. Now, a couple things to note here. We want to make this TOT report as robust as possible. There was a recommendation at our previous board meeting by public comment about uh, re reaching out to the actual TOT community at a county level and to start comparing and contrasting the data. Uh, for those of you out there that do read the reports, of course, the TOT we look at, at a city level, we do know that uh, includes all TOT paying constituents. However, 
on the second page of this report, when we look at year-over-year uh, -year comparisons by communities, that is using STAR data, Smith Travel Research. That's complete numbers. That is complete numbers? Yeah. Now, at the yeah. county level. Yes. That's outstanding. Yes, I, I called each city and they um, were very helpful. And, and this is not complete as I would like to say. I'd still like to see it broken down by ADR, but every city reports differently. So okay. um, this is just a start, but this is actual numbers from each um, DMO. So this sheet right here. No, this one. Oh, that sheet. Yes, the county course. one. And that's phenomenal. But mm -hmm. Jen, this sheet that, here. That one on the top left is STAR. This is STAR. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was referring to then. So this data we have been using has been STAR, but we know re uh, reflects maybe 30 to 50% of the inventory around here at best. For Morro Bay, it's um, one third. It's one third of the inventory. Mm -hmm. And we look at the rest of the communities, it's all over the place. Yep. So very excited that we now have the full TOT data at the county level to reflect on. Um, Jen, before I just ramble on about this, do you have any thoughts or comments you'd like to give well, on the TOT report? Yeah, I just wanted to, I mean, July, you know, was not really a great month for us like we would like to see it. I mean, it was okay, but we didn't have the lift. And countywide, you'll see none of the other cities really had the lift either, especially on the shore. Um, Fourth of July was on a Tuesday, which was part of the problem. We didn't have that extended weekend, and as we know, we didn't have fireworks. So we were not the first, um, you know, interested city to come to in Slow County for Fourth of July. Right. Yeah. And then we look at the data here through July, comparing each of the communities from the star page, which is the one that has all the infographics on it. Um, it's effectively moving exactly what I've been pre preaching for probably a year now, that we have been on a continuous ascension in RevPAR, and now it looks like things are starting to reach the crest and tip down. Some communities are slightly up in RevPAR, some are down. If a community is up, it may be because of occupancy, it may be because of rate. And so we're seeing this kind of teetering point, uh, not being mathematical here, but in reviewing all this last night, it's sort of a 50-50 split in communities up and down, occupancy being driven upward or downward, ADR upward or downward. Um, so it's just something for all of us to be aware of. We know in the lodging community, July is our strongest month. So uh, we want to continue to drive things forward. Board, do you have any comments on this report here? Uh, on on the um, on page three of thirty eight, I guess it's yeah. the first page of the report. Um, is, is there a TOT total column, or do we just have them broken down by the three components? This is uh, provided by the city treasurer, and that is the way they break them down. Okay, okay. And we see here for July year over year comparison for the first time we are down, and we had our county board meeting just yesterday as well large master spreadsheet reviewing the TOT dollars uh, collected across the entire county and we're starting to see once again this teetering we're probably uh, going to be trending somewhat on a decline although we're hoping for a very small decline and a soft landing any further questions or thoughts board yeah on that Aaron and, and to what do you attribute that you can't, a personal, good question. Uh, firstly, you can't go up forever. We've been yeah, on an 84 month run. I would agree. Uh, effectively, yeah. times have been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, we know there's a lot of political climate change. Um, when we look at the lodging reports on a national level right now, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, they were predicting a decline this year. They've now pushed that back. So we look at our six-month leading market indicators, and so they are showing effectively a very small um, overall increase, but pretty darn close to flat. And we break that out by business versus leisure travel. We'll see a split in those. We look at out na international travel is definitely declining. National travel is coming up a little bit, but when you average these metrics out, we start looking at very close to flat, and it is a sine wave. All things are cyclical, so as things start to go up, and when things start to get flat, we know we are starting on a downward trend. I'm not preaching doomsday at all, but it's something to be aware of. I think we should be thankful and blessed for the run-up that we've had, and now it's time to become competitive, realize this, speak with your revenue managers on your properties. I realize a lot of us don't have a separate revenue management department, and uh, we're doing it ourselves, but let's be conscious of our rate, not to drive the rate so aggressively that we push our occupancy downward. Personal thoughts here, I can't say this is representative of the TBID as a whole. Any other questions or thoughts? Aaron, let me just add, Steven, comparing... You have a lot of experience, please. Right, comparing interject. the numbers to some of our other hotels and other counties, which are increasing, mm -hmm. I really question, you know, how much the Highway 1 closure is affecting Morro Bay. And I think 
I, I don't know if it's five percent. I don't know what the numbers are, but I would I would guess that that's affecting probably a little more than we give it credit for. You are absolutely right, and I'm going to preach this. It was on my notes here to get into a little bit later. Uh, we know the official number for San Simeon is a 15% decline year over year for the summer, but that's only the star reporting hotels. And when we now look at the TOT data, we see that San Simeon's TOT for the fiscal year is down 23%. That is catastrophic for a lot of hoteliers. And if we were to compare summer versus summer, some properties there are down as much as 50%. And so, not to digress here, but I think as locals, we need to support our community. We need to go up there, take a little staycation on a Wednesday, or how about on a Thursday night, take Friday off of work, go to San Simeon, stay in a hotel, have lunch up at Ragged Point. We need all the communities to work together. To answer your question, Stephen, I do feel Hybo One absolutely has an effect on Morro Bay. It must. We've actually seen at a, uh, speaking to uh, Jim Lewis down the city of Pismo Beach, there has been some people on a national travel level that understood Highway 1 was closed. They weren't sure where, so they may have even bypassed their Pismo Beach travel just knowing Pismo Beach is on Highway 1. So at a county level, broadcasting this information accurately has been extremely important. Now, how to track that, that is difficult. That really is. Is there any public comment on the TOT report? <laughs> Seeing no public possible public comment on the TOT, we we're just having board discussion. That was winding down. Wanted to open the microphone up to public comment on TOT. My glasses. Sorry. Sure. Had to work this morning. Board, any other thoughts? Yeah. No. Just, uh, where, have any uh, any of the hoteliers in San Sorry. Simeon, uh, are any, any businesses up for sale? Has anyone shut their doors up in San Simeon that you know of? So the official number is over the course of the last six months, there are seven businesses in Cambria that have closed their doors. Uh, there is a rate of attrition on these smaller boutique shops, but typically one closes their door, another one tends to take the vacancy. We have not seen that in Cambria. No hotels have shut down at this point. But retail is a lot of the reasons people come and stay in our rooms is experience that culture. So there will be a lagging indicator here. Any other thoughts, board? Good conversation. Public comment? Yes, so good morning. Thank good you morning. for your patience. My name is Joan Solu, and I had to work this morning. I bet you can't imagine that, right? Um, I know, all of you, right? It's kind of the group we're in. So um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about your TOT. Um, I noticed that the biggest, uh, the biggest city of growth was past Robles, and that is because they've had such additional rooms, and I know you've already discussed that. Um, but as a group of hoteliers, we sent out an email so that we could all get together last week, and some of you were actually in attendance. We're going to continue to have those uh, in-depth kind of uh, hotel conversations as we go through this next year because we have such incredibly rising expenses. Um, if you look, TOT, this is the first time in a number of years that TOT has not hit budget the city budget. It missed city budget by about 52, almost $52,000. And I have a side-by-side -side comparison for you going all the way, uh, the history of Morro Bay's TOT going back all the way to 2002. So that you can see where we hit, where we missed, what the ADR was, what it was year over year, so that you can look at it for your next TOT discussion next month. Um, Additionally, as you know, TOT for Morro Bay was down this month as compared to, excuse me, July, not this month, but July's posting for this month, uh, year over year to last year. If you look at that, you know, people say, oh, it's only 1%, it's, you know, in terms of occupancy, it's only a couple dollars in terms of revenue. But when you couple that with the rising costs of the water, wastewater treatment plant, as hoteliers, we just discussed as a group, and most of you missed that, some of you missed that meeting, some of you were there, we just discussed that next year, per occupied room, your water and sewer rates will likely be $10.50 per room. That's about triple what your breakfast costs are. So think about what I just said to you. If TO, if what you gauge your success by largely in this community is TOT. It's sales, it's revenue. 
And so if revenue is down and costs are up, we have an imbalance. And I'd like you to really, really start looking at that strongly because that's what we discuss as a group of hoteliers, that that revenue needs to be driven because as the city increases our costs, if the city isn't increasing our revenue, they're not balancing the scales. So we're gonna to continue to have our hotel association meetings and it's likely going to grow into a hotel restaurant association over the next year. I encourage you all to attend when you receive those notices. It's important as owners and as property managers that we get together offline and really have those in-depth discussions. You as TOT, or excuse me, you as TBID members cannot um, have anything that would be on your agenda. You can't weigh in or anything. You can really just listen, but you should probably be there. So as you get those notices as owners, please make time. Um, I'm gonna supply you with these. They go all the way back. This is information that Jennifer does have. I have it electronically, if you'd like a PDF of it, if you prefer that. But right now I have it for you. And I'm, we, I just want to really express this. If you're trying to get vacation rentals online and RV parks online, and we're posting that revenue is down, who do you think is gonna join you? Joan, uh, real quick, how are you uh, publicizing the meetings that you just talked about in case I was totally not clued in? It's emailed direct to owners. It's on our owners list. And if you didn't get it, contact me at solujoan at AOL.com and I'll put you on the list. Thank you for the public comment. I'm actually looking forward to seeing those reports as well, Ms. Solo. Is there any further public comment? Seeing none. Item B2, the August 2017 Marketing Public Relations Update by our Tourism Manager. So this is the new format that Mental Marketing is set up for um, doing their monthly reports, and I'm curious to see your opinion of them and how they look. I think they're much easier to read and, and work through. So I want to go through some of the stats that um, are tracking with us. Website is um, did not grow this last month. It was down 1% year over year, but Jackrabbit leads did grow. The total referrals were up 12% for the month, so that's interesting to me that the unique visitors did not grow, but Jackrabbit did. Um, looking at paid advertising, you'll see how they broke it down. They've got the cost of the media, the impressions per click, and then um, cost all the way out. So our, we're doing pretty good. Um, you know, we don't spend a lot of money during summer months. That's just how we have set up because our, our budget is so limited. We really focus on shoulder and midweek. So you'll see July did not have um, a really high. We just don't have the money to put through the summer months. Um, on a public relations standpoint, they had some pretty good media earning, um, ad equivalency. So, you know, I was just going to talk about this briefly. The ad equivalency, you know, I mentioned before that it's related to how big is the press release compared to if you bought media in that exact size for that publication. And there's um, a lot of discussions going on in my business about is that the right way to be assessing these now? Because the way social media rolls, they have to constantly be fed. And so what you would see in a normal print publication might be one story a year, and now you're seeing them um, like one every three months because they're just constantly needing feed. And so there's, they haven't really figured this out, but they're, you know, as far as advertising marketing goes as a whole, they're really looking at how do we reassess that and how do we change the ad value. So right now this is the old traditional way based on size of the press versus the size if we'd bought that space. But you might see maybe in the next, by maybe the beginning of the year, this, this might change a little bit, which I think is appropriate, okay? Social media, um, our Facebook followers are growing strongly, and we started running these um, video ads, which we're getting a huge response on, which I'm thrilled about. I don't know if you saw with the avocado margarita, we put it on the top of the page in our um, profile cover shot, and I think that's really helped. Um, the avocado margarita had 2,000 more people in attendance this year, so I mean, that shows significantly that it really we are really helping grow that, that uh, event. Is there any questions on any of that that I can answer for you guys? Or 
Uh, and, and I guess it's too early to know what impact four booked rooms were with the avocado. You say 2,000 more <clears throat> attendees, but were those people, uh, do you have any input yet on an uptick on number of rooms booked? Our rooms were almost sold out. I think we had, um, off the top of my head, I want to say like 40 rooms left, Maggie. Okay. So we call every day and we update a list for the visitor center and I send it out also to um, the different people that are in charge of the events. And I do that with every event. So they mm -hmm. have on their phone a little current list of here's the eight motels or hotels that have rooms and how many rooms they have in their phone number. So if they're standing at the check-in booth and somebody says, I need a room, they can say, well, tonight, you know, there's only rooms at these hotels. So we do that right against when the event starts. So we do that usually Thursday. Thursday, Friday, and then um, sometimes we'll update it Saturday, but not always. Mm -hmm. But we try to really stay on that. But so we were pretty full. Good. Yeah, That's good. we were really pretty full. Excellent. And um, remember, we gave out the free tickets. Mm -hmm. So the free tickets, we um, had a redemption on those. About 450 total tickets were redeemed. And I would say that equates to probably 900 total patrons going through their gate. Because assume that everybody's, most people will have a second person in their room if they're going to an event like that. So so those numbers are really strong. We gave out 900 tickets total, and we had over 50% redemption from our hotel, hotel guests. So I'm, I thought that was a really great thing. I will definitely do that every year with them. Yeah. That's great. Do we track um, uh, foot traffic or phone calls to the visitor center? They do. The visitor center is managed under Chamber of Commerce, and usually Erica will come in quarterly and give an update on that, Sean. Mm-hmm. It does seem like the festival was a success, um, but to focus on this here, and I know it seems like it's a bit of a voodoo art sometimes, uh, going to these different BID meetings all around, everyone you go to, social media is always up, things are always up, it's always up, always up, always up. But then how, what are the latest metrics and how do we start converting this to actual conversion rates for guests to dollars in our pocket for doing the work? Right, and most of that is done through our SEO, and um, so I'll bring that back on our quarterly report next month, and we'll show how that tracks through. Um, there, there's some problems with tracking some of the SEO through because if you use a Bitly, it doesn't track all the way through to our booking. So we've changed that, um, and I think that'll help us track and see where we're where we're going as far as what are we what are we putting online and what is actually going to the booking engine. But we still ha will always have the problem that once they get to the booking engine, I can't tell if they booked a room. Mm -hmm. It goes off of my page and onto individual hotels, so I have no way of qualifying that, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that can be a little bit of the nature of this, and hopefully as things move forward, we'll drill down into this more. Um, any of you here as operators, do you have any feedback or thoughts in your individual organizations on ways that you're starting to track these kind of PR efforts as they actually convert to dollars? I feel like this is a conversation that every month we need to have, you know? What are we hearing? Nothing? Yeah, That's fine. I, I, I've always tough, been isn't it, Maggie? It's tough to, it's tough yeah. to track this it stuff. Is. It and, is. And, you know, for us, we have a, a pretty defined software. You know, it's a cloud-based management. It's not, it's a... Which one are you using, Charlie? We're using SkyTouch. Okay. And, you know, it, it gives us some functionality, but it really doesn't give us a lot. We have to actually physically put notes in manually to account for some of these programs. And um, that's the only way we're able to get it because it only has one specific code that we can put in, which is a rate code. Um, there are some marketing things that we can do in there, you know, market survey stuff that we can do. But it is really a difficult thing to uh, say for the avocado. You know, we had... Um, we had a great, we had a great number of people that were very interested in it. We didn't charge them anything for these free tickets, and so we put on the reservation a note. Well, I've got to go manually and search through notes for that weekend to to physically count them up. So it it, it is a little bit dicey when you try to get some more information, especially when you're running a a standard cloud-based software that's not as robust as a. Um, uh, any and a bigger one or different sure. one. Um, so it's really up to me and my marketing team to go through and take the time, you know, and our conversion, you know, front desk conversion people to take the time to make the note, to put it in so that we make sure that we get the tickets to the people. So those type of things are, are definitely difficult to, um, to account for, but it's worthwhile, worthwhile metrics to know. 
let me give you a, a little insight on that, Charlie. So avocado margarita is much more functional than some of our other events. So don't expect this on all the events, but with um, avocado margarita, we printed out the tickets with each hotel name on them. So they have the ability and they're going to break it down for me. And I told my, I didn't need that right now. I just needed the total count, but they're going to give me a breakdown for each hotel and how many were redeemed. So you will know that you don't have to bother your team with that. Isn't that great? Yeah. All right. And, and my only other comment is with around all the social, social media, and I look at this, and number of clicks and Facebook followers and all this, that to me is even more kind of voodoo is that you really don't, you know, yeah, people may be going, yeah, that's cool, oh, that's cool, but we have... To my knowledge, we have no way of knowing if that actually converts to somebody making a plan and showing up here and coming to town. And so when I see all the effort, it's impressive. And I see the articles, you know, that you share with us, which are just great publication. I think they're doing an excellent job of that. But I don't know how we'll ever get to, it's just a comment. There's no response required really of how we get to how that converts to actual people showing up in our town. Yeah. I had a quick comment. Please do. Um, my organization uh, relies so much on social media, but I mean, it's such a different perspective than you guys because um, we're not trying to get them to one location. It's many locations. But I mean, we've done such a, and we're so low cost. It's, it's like the, what's the gorilla way to do it? You know, it's the simplest, fastest way to get what we want. And this year we hired a, a contractor who's on staff to do our social media um, outside of the individual clubs. So like for our business model. And it's been really great because he uh, has contact with Facebook and we use all of their metrics and their stuff. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, we don't have the money to do software and all that stuff like that, but what we do get to do is we get to have, it's them working. You know what I mean? I mean, who better to tell us what Facebook's doing than Facebook, right? I mean, if I can get them to show us what we need to know and be like, okay, this is the new thing we're doing. This is because they're changing so fast that from my perspective in saving money and being the fastest, because speed really is my thing, is what is Facebook doing tomorrow? What is Facebook doing the next day? What is Facebook doing? Because that entity has all the money. They have all the control. They have all the metrics. So how do I get them to be my contractor? You see what I mean? So uh, just kind of adding to that, the, the, the simpler you can get it, if, you, if, if, if theoretically you had everything operating through one specific software system and it wasn't then partitioned out into all these different fragmented areas and booking platforms, then you could easily track it. So that would, that's obviously in a perfect world and it's maybe not that feasible in the hotel world. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I even had this experience um, even when I branched out from Airbnb to other booking platforms, it turned, in, it turned into a management nightmare and you couldn't track anything. And so when I scaled back just to Airbnb, even though it's not a perfect system, I can, I can, there's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting closer to uh, attributing a certain percentage of my page views and being able to somewhat predict few Future bookings based on very limited factors, whether it's an event that we have um, or a, a change in price. And there seems to be two, two general waves where people are booking two months in advance or the day before, and there's that lull in between. So whatever we can do to kind of simplify it as much as possible, certainly we have mental marketing and we have all these factors, but the, the fewer total platforms and the fewer total eyeballs analyzing something it has seemed to be more successful, at least for me. Well, I think the fewer platforms analyzing, you'll get more accurate data, but off a smaller sample size. And so we need to do both. We need to grow our sample size, which positively affects our wallets, as well as increase the accuracy of the data. I know it's very challenging with a multitude of channels out there and platforms, um, but it was I didn't actually expect a perfect answer right now, but just that conversation that going to these meetings, you see social media's up, PR's up, the numbers are up, but is that a false correlation between the two? And I just think we need to continue to focus on that. How do we get a little better, better data, even if it's just one morsel at a time? 
I'll, I'll give you a couple more thoughts on yeah. it as well. Um, and I agree with everything you guys are saying. It's really difficult and it's changing every day. I, Travis Ford does our um, social media. I think he does a great job. I'm really happy with what he's doing and he's always on the edge of like looking for what's next. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with him. He has this now doing, it's the last thing on the page, the asset development. We're doing these ads now on YouTube and they are having stronger pull than any of our Facebook ads. I mean, it's doing really, really well. So it has the video that you watch before you can watch the whatever you're looking at. Plus it has a static ad next to it. So you can click on that and it goes to our booking engine. So that's, he's working on that for, um, for me and where I sit um, tracking on social media and how it goes through to booking. I don't see it ever really happening, especially if we're going to add VRs and you're talking about a lot more properties in there. And one of the dynamics that we started last year, and it was very much in its infancy, and I think it's going to be much stronger this year, is these added value items that do not cost the hotels anything. So, you know, the problem, like with our wine promotion, it does really well, but not all the hotels want to participate because there's a cost to them. So doing things like the passports, those do really well. The avocado margarita tickets that are free, all of those give me ability to track it doesn't track 100% but it tracks much better so the kids passport it comes out very soon it comes out in November last year it was my test I didn't print real ones I just tested it to see how it would do it did really well this year's passport we have $140 in value I mean we have amazing offers in there and I think we're going to see great response from the hotel guests so that those type of things will help me track guests how much are they being sold for? They're free. They're free. They're free to every guest, and they do not cost the hotel anything. They're paid through the bid. Yeah. So those are the things that, you know, then we can get them in every hotel, and there's not an issue of, I don't want to spend money on it or anything. Okay. Yeah. And Jen, I, we may have digressed kind of mid your report. Okay. Sorry about that. I think you were at <laughs> Campaigns, Asset Development, Event Video, Social Media. You're moving just past the grid. Correct. I'm going to uh, go to page eight and just talk about some things that, other things that they're working on. The um, the September events, they've got some pretty strong email blasts that we're doing. We're doing LA Times and LA Magazine. We're seeing great response from those e-blasts, and those go to like a general cell e-blast that talks about the concert and different events, and then it clicks over to our page. And then they also have one going out to the uh, USC alumni, which is a really strong group. Again, it's um, people that can travel midweek, travel you know, off season. So those are the type of people that we want to get down in the um, Southern California area. The, they have two promotions that we're working on for the concerts on the Bay. The first one was a VIP package that um, was put together. It's a uh, table for four VIP with a hotel room, the landing, um, donated rooms for those. And um, it's got food and wine. It's a really, really good package. And KTLA stepped up and let us put that on there for free. So getting on KTLA is huge with no sort of ad, ad buy. I'm thrilled by. So those, those are the type of things that we're able to stretch our dollars better on. And I'm, I'm thrilled with. Um, I mentioned the kids' passport already, which um, will start, I, I'll put out the creative probably today. We got the final approval yesterday, so I'll email that out to all the hotels so they can start promoting it out. And the passport is, like I said, really, really strong. I think everybody will be happy. It's got like a free kite for every kid. I mean, good items on there. I think it'll, it'll do really well. And then the, um, the wine promotion, so the wine promotion is currently going, and we can still add hotels to it. If you have a hotel that you want to add or know of a hotel that would like to be added on, it's not a problem. Um, the hotels that are in it are doing really well. I know one hotel that, it's a small hotel, I think they have 16 rooms. First two weeks of September, they, they booked 24 room nights on that. That's really strong. So it's doing well. It's worth the $5 a night that it costs to a hotel if, um, if anybody wants to be added. I'll add you. No big deal. Then I've got um, the PR samples that um, Mental Marketing has. You'll see that all these have hyperlinks. So if you have your agenda online or if anybody's watching, you can go on any of those hyperlinks and take a look at them. I'm not going to go through all of them. But I wanted to show some features that I thought were pretty strong. So Sunset Magazine did a write-up. It was the 20 best vacation spots, and Morro Bay was named number 10. They showed the Skateboard Museum, which was kind of kind of fun. And then the other one is Oyster.com. Oyster.com has, it's 
it's pretty huge. It's a big deal. I mean, they have like over 2 million unique visitor views, and that was 10 incredible Labor Day weekend getaways, and Morro Bay was listed on there. So these are the things that they're pushing out, and then it links over to our website. No cost us. I mean, that's those things are huge. How do you track them? We track them through the SEO. That's the type of thing we do on the SEO part of it is track that back to our site. But then again, does it, does it book? I can't tell if it books. Jen, going back to that, so if the person is on Oyster and then it redirects from Oyster to our site, our SEO can determine where they came from, yes, the source. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Does, does it track each person as a unique visitor, or is it all Oyster gets lumped into one visitor status? I think it goes all in one. Okay. I'm not positive, but it depends. Every magazine is different, so I can check, though. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And then again, the um, the end of their outline, they've got some pretty strong visiting journalists that are coming up. We actually had um, one cancel yesterday. She's in the hospital, unfortunately. Von Lowry was here during the um, the cars. Did you guys see all the exotic cars that came through town? He did a huge um, blast for us. There was like 70 cars down at Gaff Cove just for lunch on their way to the Monterey car show. And he basically took over our social media page for that day and just did a real big push out for us. So that was, again, hitting that kind of L.A. climate that's got money to come off season is what I'm looking for with them. Good. Any questions on their stuff? And then the, the PR packet behind it is all the individual um, stories. If you want, if you have any questions on any of them, I'd be glad to go through them individually, but we don't have to. That's what all the hyperlinks are for. Any questions? Yeah. Or any questions or thoughts for Jen? None? Is there any public comment? Since it's on the overhead, I don't need glasses for this one. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Joan Salou, and um, I own a hotel here in town and help pay into the bid. Um, so in terms of what you all were talking about, really what I would say to you in social media, all the views and clicks and looks and likes and tweets and instas and photos and da-da-da, What's really important about the entire thing is not necessarily that we analyze it and drill down and say we had 100,000 people or 1,000 people look at that, but it's what is the visitor's perception of what they're looking at and how does that perception cause them to book a room? So everything we're doing should be with an eye to causing them to have, causing them to elicit an emotional response to book a vacation in Morro Bay. It is not necessarily statistical. It is not necessarily, it is not necessarily analytical. It is more for that moment to cause an emotional response to book your vacation. So whether that's because the photo of someone kayaking on the bay is going to compel you because you're a retired couple and you wanna kayak on the bay like that. So it's a broad spectrum of things that cause people to book, but everything that you do as a bid should come from the guest's perspective. Don't ever, ever, ever lose sight of the guest when you're doing this. Because if you do, we will lose the ability to make the sale. And how you gauge whether that look to book ratio has occurred for this community is largely based off of your TOT reports. It's largely, you know, we could have, our viewership could go up two million times, but why is it going up? Why is Morro Bay in the news? We've had some great PR to get Morro Bay in the news. Some terrific things have happened this year. I mean, I would say even Amgen got us in the, the news. I don't think it caused a conversion for us, 
I don't think that media caused a conversion for us. I think our revenue shows that. But it did cause us to be in the news a lot. So we can be in the news a lot, but is it causing a conversion, right? So always remember to think about all of the marketing side of this thing from what does the guest see, what's the guest perception, and how do we cause the guest to book? Because if we lose sight of that connectivity with our guests, then we're not going to hit the mark. And I think a lot of what we're doing is great. I think a lot of what we're doing with the, I mean, look at the exposure. So we have we have one we have a big spoke a, a big uh, gear and somewhere in here we want to make sure that we're not missing anything that connects and i would say to you guys take every every month take a really hard look because it's not about what we did it's about where we're going now yesterday's dollar is yesterday's dollar if your room was empty last night charlie are you going to be able to book it tonight no it was empty last night you're never going to get it back the apple sits on the shelf at Albertsons. They have it today to sell again. You don't get your room back. So we've got to sell every room during the day, for the day, if they're empty, like the 40 for avocado margarita. But I would say to you, look to the future. Look at the past and make everything link and get that future going. Just to expand on what Joan said, because she's absolutely right. So when you look back at the mental book that they put together every month, the real important thing is Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit is where the hotels sit. So how many people are going over to Jackrabbit and looking at rates and clicking through to hotels? You know, that's really important. And it is it is growing really well. Um, for August, it was up 67% over the last year. And click-throughs to hotels was up 12%. So those are pulling through. And that really, bottom line, she's right, that's what we really need to focus on is are they actually getting to the booking engine? Very good point. And that's one of the things that's really challenging about this, nailing these, uh, these metrics for PR and exposure. I love that you brought up Amgen. That's phenomenal. Somebody sees Amgen, they experience Morro Bay visually, and then they're thinking, oh, for Valentine's Day, let's go to Morro Bay in February of 2018. So how do you track that correlation between international media exposure and a guest coming six months later? That is what's so difficult about this industry, right? How do you put those two things together? It's nearly impossible. So it's, it's challenging. Anyways. I call it I call it planting seeds. Exactly. You know, we're, we're seeds. sowing seeds for the future in a lot of these events that we do. And, and Amgen brand. in particular is a great event, not so much for the day of the event, but for the days after and weeks, months, and years. It really is, for, for me, it's a marketing event to market the area um, for future guests. It's not for the for the day. So, But again, to, uh, to echo Joan's point, yeah. we have to have that reason. We have to, our stories need to be compelling for them to come here, not just look at a pretty article and look at pretty pictures. It's what that connection is to drive them to want to be here. And so, again, I think we're, we're really seeing that. But to Joan's point and to mine is don't lose track of that connectivity with the guest to stay here. You know, all these great articles, like you say, you know, really fun. You know, you're, you're, you're looking at them, but we always have to keep that call to book message going. So... Also, Charlie, how many notes right here? I have emotional connection actually written down. So, uh, any further public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to item B3, which is an update to potentially including vacation rentals and RV parks in the TBID assessment report given by our deputy city manager. Connie Tompiao, Deputy City Manager, and uh, we'll be talking about the potential inclusion of VRs and RV parks into the TBID. Uh, the purpose of today's report um, is a continuation of the discussion that we started last fiscal year um, and to bring everyone up to speed. Um, 
This is, again, just to give an update. Um, this is not to take any action or motion. This is just to uh, give us some um, more, if anything, prepare us for the town hall meeting that's going to be held um, in October. So um, uh, we have some new board members um, on on, on T-Bid when we had the discussion, so it's good just to get everybody on the same page. So um, the, the, the brief background in 2009, City of Morro Bay established the T-Bid with a 3% per assessment of gross room rates to all hotels within the city boundaries. Um, assessment was designed for occupancy by tran uh, transients uh, for dwelling, lodging, sleeping purposes. Uh, at the November 10th, uh, 2016 TBID meeting last year, the board directed staff to analyze the rate scenarios of potentially including vacation rentals and RVs in the assessment district. So in 2009, um, hotels, motels, bread and breakfasts, they were included in the 3% per percent assessment. Uh, vacation rentals um, and RV parks um, were not included um, in there. And the Staff report um, in 2009 shares that there were some reasons why they weren't included. I know um, Joan Solo can speak more to that on why they uh, they weren't included at the time. But um, according to the staff report, the reason why vacation rentals and, and um, RV parks weren't included at the time is, uh, number one, it would take time to pull them. Number two, the vacation rentals may already have contracts and rental agreements in place for that upcoming summer. That this, so then the city and team would consider phasing vacation rentals the following year in 2010, which never happened. So that's why we started um, uh, the discussion in 2016. Then after that discussion in November, um, to look at possible rates, um, December 8, 2016, TBID meeting, the board appointed Charlie Yates and, um, and Maggie as subcommittee members for, for the project. Uh, the board directed staff to meet with subcommittee and discuss public outreach strategy to possibly include uh, VR's RV parks um, in the TBID. At January 19, 2017, TBID meeting, staff and subcommittee made the recommendation to maintain the current TBID structure and continue to focus on excellence in tourism. Staff and subcommittee felt that with the recent transition of TBID to the city, the assessment area should not be expanded until the following fiscal year. And here we are today. Um, as we enter fiscal year 17, um, 17, 18, staff and TBID would like uh, to discuss the topic of a potential inclusion of VRs and RV parks into the TBID. And we invite all stakeholders to share their input uh, we have reserved Vets Hall, this location, for Tuesday, October 24th, 2017, to have a town hall meeting uh, on the topic, and that'll start at 1, 1 p.m. to about 2.30. Property owners and stakeholders that may be out of the area on this date and unable to attend will have the opportunity to write their comments to TBID which will be available for public to view online. Comments should be emailed to tbid at morrobayca.gov by 11.59 p.m. Tuesday, October 17th to be posted for the town hall meeting. So this is the flyer that, this is the flyer that we uh, plan to post later this week, early next week to all owners. Um, this is basically uh, telling them about the town hall meeting, um, and everything, uh, just initial questions that they might have. Um, this is more uh, focused to vacation rentals and RV parks as they might have questions to what T-bids are. That's what the last page is. Why am I receiving this flyer? Uh, what could T-bid funds be used for? What is the cost? What is the duration? Who manages the T-bid? What is the T-bid budget? Why should I support forming a T-bid? and what are advantages of joining the TBID. These are the type of questions that we'll answer on this flyer. So the purpose of this flyer, obviously, is to tell them about the town hall meeting on October 24th, tell them how they could voice their opinion, share their concerns, send it to uh, the TBID email at tbid at moralbayca.gov, um, and then also answer some uh, initial questions that they might have. Um, again, this is going to be emailed um, to the 
to the contact that we have on record. Um, uh, some of the board members brought up it would be great if this could go directly to the owners. Um, staff, we, we only have um, whatever contact we have on, on file. So we would hope that um, the property manager, or whoever the contact is, sends it over to, to the owner can find that because it, it would, we understand that all the owners of properties uh, may, not be, um, may not be local. Uh, but again, I, I, the meeting with the subcommittee, the most important thing was for for everyone to, to voice their opinion, to share their comments. And so um, that's why we invite all those who, who have um, any concerns or any questions to please email, um, call us. We, we will post this. If we get this a week before, we'll post this online and make sure that everybody is invited in discussions. If there's questions that they want asked, um, we're going to ask, have a panel at the at the... Uh, October 24th town hall meeting and really what we need to do is just just talk about this I think a lot of the what what we've done as TBIT is we we've been talking uh, through it but um, the most important thing is to to include the VRs and RVs and expand the discussion expand the audience um, so currently hotels motels are assessed 3% of gross room rates um, ordinance number 546 which established a TBIT in 2009 um, says the TBIT assessment shall be spent to administer marketing and visitor programs to promote the city of Morro Bay as a tourism visitor destination. Hotels, motels, um, and bread and breakfasts were assessed about 800,000 in fiscal year uh, 1617 that just passed, that ended, in, um, ended at the end of June this year. The following. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, if everybody could just switch the VRs and RVs, those looking at home, um, those just need to be switched, my mistake. Um, but in the first column, RVs are, in the first column would should be RV column, and in the second column should be the VR column. Um, so what what this represents is Hotels have been paying um, into the TBID 3%. If, if the board moved forward, or if VRs and RVs parks paid uh, into the assessment bid, this at these different rates, this is what would have been included in the bid. So just add 800,000 to um, uh, to what you see in the column. That's that's what have been uh, new new assessed funds into the TBID. All right, so our last slide, talking about uh, the, the benefits. What the benefits are into joining the TBID benefits, um, into joining the TBID is placement on the tourism website, morebay.org. Jen does a great job. She talked about uh, Jack Rabbit and uh, and directing and getting people to book into Morro Bay. Uh, Morrobay.org is one of the top-rated Google search pages for Morro Bay, so the site offers visitors the tools they need to plan and book their trip. Uh, currently, Morro Bay tourism marketing efforts drive over 240,000 unique visitors per year to Morrobay.org. Um, so vacation uh, rentals, RVs, those uh, lodging industries included in the bid uh, would be placed on this website as well, have their own page, um, have their own dedicated listing um, to, to drive visitors uh, to, to the property. Also, the website has active booking engine on the website that can expand to include vacation rentals and RV parks. Um, 36,000 searches for lodging team bid members over the last 12 months. Participation in marketing added value campaigns to incentivize travel during shoulder season and midweek. Participation in strategic event promotions that will include booking calls to action and coincide with PR 
promotions, season, seasonal digital social media campaigns, um, also booking with journalists to write about uh, vacation vacation rental and RV experience, direct referrals to the property, and also access to the annual stakeholders meeting and events throughout the year. So these are, this is where we're at right now, um, bringing us into the potential inclusion of the uh, vacation rentals and RV parks um, into into the T-bid. So I just want to open it up, um, see if you had any questions or thoughts as we prepare for the town hall meeting. Um, this is this is where we are right now. So uh, any questions? I will say just out of my peripheral vision, I see several of us grabbing microphones and moving into this. So um, Maggie, you reached first. I saw um, that. Just one small thing kind of in here that I saw uh, it, that I saw Jennifer's feedback about the ta town hall meeting being more predominant than it being vacation rental. Um, but hopefully people will read through that. I realize these are probably already produced and you can't change that. But I would have agreed with they're that. Not produced, that it, they're not produced yet. Oh, they're not. Yeah, yeah. So it's still. I would love to see the title incorporate, you know, say uh, town hall meeting for inclusion of vacation rentals and RV parks in the T-bid, um, okay. if possible. I think I thought that was good feedback, just so it catches people's eye. Um, and now I lost my thing. There was also a, just a statement in there um, where you said, when you describe what the bid is and its ability, and you said, and it is renewable each year, which is in theory true, but since we're promotion, promoting the to me, that's a little bit re, uh, misleading to the reader, and maybe we can talk about it more in the town hall, because since we're not under the 1989 rules, it's really automatically renewed each year unless there's a protest that comes out against that. So I don't know if that could be reworded, or maybe we just address that to make sure people are clear, because you know people could say, okay, let's try it for a year. Well, it's, it's a bigger deal than that, trying it for a year. Okay. You know, you, you would really have to get a force uh, to come out. Um, the letters that absentee no owners will be able to uh, will be able to submit, will those be read out loud or how are they included in the town hall meeting? Yeah, those those we were we were thinking how to uh, how to best put the the comments and so what we treat it like we would treat uh, any comments preceding okay. uh, a town hall meeting for city council is we'll, we'll, we'll post it online. One thing that um, I, I think would be great is they're going to have some questions um, in there. We're going to have a panel discussion. We're hoping to have a panel discussion there. So we're going to categorize different questions and then um, put them in clusters and, and ask those type of questions. It, it won't, uh, we may not say who it's from, but it yeah. may be a, uh, a question but if representing. it's a common comment. Five, yeah, common yeah, comment. And so that's, okay, that's what we'll, we'll try to do. But it will be posted online. Uh, people can uh, see it uh, with the agenda packet, or um, we can put it on social media. I mean, you, you tell us it's one of those things, and we can link it, perhaps email it out to all the owners that we have on contact as well mm -hmm. and say, here are the, the comments that we have. But those are some possibilities. Okay. And, and I think, you know, just you should anticipate that, again, you know, you're not going Going to have a lot of people present because it's midweek and and this is not a time from my personal experience when owners are in their homes necessarily so I think a lot of your uh, participation from from a vacation rental standpoint and RV park you know certainly I think property managers will show up and rep to represent yeah. that and same thing on the RV parks but that's a thing thank you uh, thank you Maggie just wanted to yeah. clarify for all those watching at home and in the audience reason why um, we put this out to the subcommittee, what would be the best time? Mm -hmm. you know, some people watching me say, oh, Tuesday at 1 o'clock, that's a bad time. But um, it, it had to do, I, 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 it, after receiving feedback, they said they didn't want to do in the beginning of the week or at the end of the week because of uh, um, because of people checking in, people checking out. Mm -hmm. So they said midweek, do it in the afternoon, mm -hmm. not beginning day, you know, not at the end of the day. So that's yeah. where, where Tuesday at 1 o'clock came in. So. Okay. Um, that's why we're at. And who, who's on the subcommittee? Maggie and Charlie. Okay. And they were appointed. Yeah. They were appointed last yeah. year. Um, 
and and Joan um, provided this, which is wonderful, but this is something I've been pushing for all along that I think should be presented there is to, as proof to these people we need to be able to see, you know, prior results and see how the T-bid has grown tourism and if, you know, results from when it's been its inception to now of, you know, the growth that, that the hoteliers have uh, received from it, I think would be a powerful statement if that's available. And just to follow up on that, so there, the two subcommittee members are uh, well, well connected in the hotelier industry and maybe a different, you know, we, we set up a meeting from one to three on a, on a weekday, which uh, the target audience of potential VR, uh, we have our contact list of uh, 250 vacation rental permit holders where we have all their contact information. We have 56 wait list people. This will get directly mailed to all of them? Yes. Okay. McConney, when is the deadline for public comment? For, for the town hall yes. to to have it displayed online? Correct. Um, I think it was October 19th, I want to say. Yeah. So it's uh, 17, Tuesday, October, October 17th. 17th. 17th, excuse me. Um, midnight. Now, we can always just, you know, those that come in late, uh, we, we we said that because that, that'll definitely guarantee them placed online. Anything that trickles in after, um, we could always uh, print, print later or, you know, um, print it. On the day of, it'll be in the back for everyone to read, but it gives everyone a good chance if they could put it in before October 17th, it'd be great. One more follow-up question. How is the city ultimately going to make a decision on this? It's obviously not going to be a popular vote. Is it the city council, or what is the decision? So, so what, great question. Thank you. Um, so what happens is uh, TBID makes an approval um, at this stage, um, whatever that is, um, a, approval, denial, um, whatever they decide to do with VRs and RVs. Um, and then when it's time to renew the 1989, it uh, then at the time the process is a resolution of intention, which comes in the spring to city council, and city council would make the ultimate um, approval as well. Um, so it would follow that price process, which happens in the, in the spring. So first, T-bit approval of whatever that is, and then council um, will then decide to approve what. Um, uh, sorry, Connie, to clarify then, you're saying T-bit approval. So we are receiving and filing today. We do the town hall meeting for education. And then what is the step immediately following the town hall meeting? Are we clear on that? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. So this is today this is a receive and file. Correct. We are not making any motions. Yeah. October twenty fourth, town hall meeting, get as many of the constituency involved as possible, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Is there a conclusion being derived at the end of the town hall meeting? Is it also just an awareness? Yeah, that that is uh, that is awareness. Education. That is awareness, that is information. Dialogue. And then dialogue. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna meet again. Uh, we may meet a few more times after town hall meeting. Um, that will let us know because right now, really, we haven't heard from the um, the VRs and RV parks. So the town hall meeting, I mean, we can. We're inviting for discussion right now, but that'll be really the beginning of it. that. Might be the beginning of the conversation right there. We so have a few more meetings. The steps yeah. after town hall are not set in stone. They're yet. not set in That's stone. What we're hearing, yeah. Okay. Um, but we're going to have direction after the town hall meeting. Um, from there, we'll have at least better uh, understand what steps to take after that. Um, and then we'll come back perhaps in December or January um, to TBIT and see if we need to do another town hall meeting or if we need to uh, meet again, um, do different things. Uh, I know four out of six people on the board uh, uh, voted for a recommendation uh, that those that VRs and RVs be included prior to all this, inclu uh, including feedback from outside parties. What I don't see that on the timeline. Whatever happened to that recommendation? To, so we we like the idea, uh, frankly, as a hotelier. Um, and when I read through some of this documentation here, uh, the resolution states that the proceeds from the TBIT assessment, other voluntary contributions, shall be spent to administer marketing and visitor programs to promote the city of Morbay as a tourism and visitor destination. So a personal opinion um, that the VRs and RVs definitely benefit from that right now. We know there's going to be overflow, rates of attrition of guests that will move from a hotel to a VR, especially with all the new platforms and channels. 
it's just as easy to book a vacation rental as it is a hotel room. And previously, that was a bit of a barrier to entry for guests traveling, and that's where hotels would gain greater market share. But it's the tech world, so vacation rentals are able to book very easily. Um, so personally, I'm for it. I think they're getting great benefit. I think they'll get even greater benefit and a collective whole. Um, that being said, at the time, yeah, the first of the year in January, we decided, okay, the board was for it, but also there had been transitions in the summer of 16 with the city now managing and taking over TBID and so forth. So we said, let's not buy it off more than we can chew. Let's table this. Let's let the city administer TBID for the entire fiscal year of 1617. Now that we've crossed that threshold, the city's been under control for a year. Now we wanted to go back to the community and say, okay, we're not going to make too many changes in one 12 month calendar. Is my accurate? Okay. So I, I now we, and also as part of that dialogue, we said as well, we did not want to come out um, as and envelop the VR and RV community without bringing good discussion to them. And hopefully they will see the benefits and actually want to be part of the program and really have a good dialogue with them. Hence the town hall. Taylor, of course, ask. Yeah, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like this is just a great example of how democracy works, and I love that we give everybody so much time to talk about stuff um, under the current democracy, but you know how it can shift. I mean, we can make a decision like you were pointing out, and we could have the city council say, hey, this is what we're going to do, and it's done. There's different ways to ram a stick into a hole. Um, this one is the more gentle democ democratic way, and it uh, sounds like people are going to get a lot of time to make their comments. And at the end of that process, if you don't make your comments, if you don't come forward and speak your mind, then you will do what everybody else has decided to do. And that's the way America works. So pat everybody on the back and let's move forward. All right. I feel like you needed an American flag blowing. We need a fan on that flag blowing as you're speaking. I'm just not there any sure further that Sean's yes. question got answered. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> just because Maggie brings it up again, the uh, four members on this board motioned for them to be included in the current T-bid, and they voted for it, and it passed, and then it kind of disappeared. And this current approach, I'm all for because it seems that we're actually inviting input from the people that are affected by the vote that did take place, and I don't see it on the timeline. That's all my question was. Yeah, and I think after that motion was made, then it was determined we could. You went back to the city man or to the powers that be and determined that that we couldn't just unilaterally hear. We had to, to go through this process, and I think that's exactly what we're doing now, right, Cunning? That's exactly right, Maggie. Yeah. Thank you. Is any further further board discussion? I just want to make sure that we have um, substantial representation from the. Uh, positive representation from the hotel community that the hoteliers are invited to this. Um, I want to make sure that everybody that is benefiting from this gets a chance to, to come and comment. Yeah. Uh, so thank I you, Charlie. Sure so that all lodging industries will, right. will be, it will, it will be all owners from all laundry, lodging industries, uh, from hotels, VRs, and RV parks. And that's a, a bit of my concern as well. Uh, protests tend to gain, I think, a greater turnout than people that are for something. And so what we see, well, we'll have to see, but uh, I, I'd like to see an equal representation of hotels there as well. So please push that as much as you can, Jen and Connie. Got it. So somebody asked the question, I just want to clarify. So even the people on the wait list for the vacation rental business licenses, will they will be included in the mailing? Sure. Uh, okay. It seems simple. So thank you for that. And uh, it was mentioned a few times, so okay. we'll make sure. Also, I was going to mention that uh, we have Mark Elderman coming to speak at that town hall. He uh, manages the Highway 1 Discovery Route, which is all the unincorporated bid area of our county, and um, that's a lot of vacation rentals, so he's going to come and talk about the benefit of bringing them into their bid. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Stephen. Uh, Connie, do you roughly know how many owners of vacation rentals there are I, I would I would cluster vacation rentals and RV owners as compared to hotel owners in Morro Bay um, just very yeah rough so figures. so I don't have that number off the top of my head but we have that data yeah there's currently 250 licenses, though, Stephen, for vacation rentals, and then the RV parks. There's Our, yeah, RV handful. parks. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, 
Jen's right. Um, uh, RV parks, we have about four, four or five parks, um, but it's it's less than 10, so it's somewhere between five to, to eight um, RV parks. How many anyway. pending applications are there? Do we know? 50? I think 56. You said I, don't know. Something. I, I heard yeah, 56, 56, or you said 56. Yeah. Okay. In comparing that, roughly how many hotel owners are there? There are 38 total hotels, 915 rooms, so it's it probably equates to one third of our total stock for hotels. So from where I sit, that's a, a big change for me. I'll have to do some assessment on how do I manage that, the percentage wise. You know, what are they bringing into the budget, and how much time do I allocate? You know, for vacation rentals and RVs versus hotels. I mean, there's a, a lot of work to still do on it. I, I think you see where I'm going. Like, you're mm -hmm. talking about 300 versus 30. Ish. So, but it's right. not a one for one vote. It's based on revenue, correct? Right. So. Yeah. And at this point, we haven't even determined if there's a vote that will happen or how we proceed forward after October 24th. Is that, is there some premeditation for November, December, January? Or I think so, everybody's going to know exactly this process. If they're to attend the meeting on the 24th, they're going to say, what's the significance of that meeting and how does that cascade down? So when, when TBIT has their recommendation, um, that is that is done. Um, that's that's not a vote on the on the TBIT level. That's an advisory board. So that's whatever you take, you decide to recommend to take to city council. That is done on on the on the board after we do town hall meetings, um, and after we do outreach. When you have whatever your recommendation is to council, then at that time. Um, there, there will be a public hearing at council. There will be two council meetings. The first one is a resolution of attention when that's presented in the spring. Then later in the spring, there's a public hearing and the uh, last city council meeting to solidify um, there. So at the, at the council's public hearing, at the second meeting, that's when uh, public comments can be made. Okay, so my takeaway then, town hall October, there may be a secondary town hall if it's felt necessary. At some point, it'll be on TBIT agenda for us to make a formal recommendation to city council. That sounds like that's early 2018, for Q1. Then it, we make our recommendation to city council. They take that under consideration through their two separate city council meetings. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. Quick Which, question. Uh, just on. real quick question. So as, as Sean pointed out, the last time we did a formal vote, was that formal? I mean, I mean, what's the difference between... F I'm just getting confused because I thought the last time we talked about this and we had this discussion and we made a recommendation, we voted. I mean, it went down in minutes, right? We had a majority vote. That's official, right? That's formal. That was a recommendation, right? So Jen and I are discussing that. We, we need to look at our, our records on that because we... We did, you, you did make uh, the recommendation, and then um, the next the next meeting, um, we told to, the next meeting, we have to look at the action, the motion that was taken there, if it was to uh, rescind the vote. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, or, or. I don't remember ever having a vote rescinded or anything. I mean, I think if you make a vote, okay. that's, okay, let's go back to democracy, right? We make a vote, standing up here, taking our time on television. That's a recommendation, right? Okay, okay yeah. so in the process of democracy, where did that file go? Where did that, that was a recommendation. And, and all I'm saying, council. Taylor, is, is, is you're exactly right. Well, just let me look at the motion that was taken, and, and you're right, if, if the motion. Absolutely right. I mean, I made all, an oath I'm saying. to be doing my job. I want to say because of fear of political climate, we did make a vote. That is our recommendation, and we decided to shelve it because we felt that the community may have not, the VRs and RVs may not have been formally educated on this process, and then it was also part of allowing, we didn't want to push too much out in the community. The city takes over TBID in uh, summer of 16, and then four or five months later, now we want to envelop VRs and RVs, and it would create a backlash. Okay. So that was the conversation we had then thereafter. Is let's table that. Let's give it one fiscal year under city management. Then let's go back. So don't we have to have a vote to negate a vote? That's nope. a good question. I mean, if you make a, if you make a, if you vote a majority, right? And then something is supposed to happen with that, and then you'd like, hey, we don't really feel like it. Don't we have to have a vote to disqualify that or something? 
the process just is right now. I mean, I was ready to move on, but right now I'm just getting irritated. This sounds weird and stupid. I, I think the best thing is we, we just need to um, look at that motion um, and, and see what actually happened there because uh, Taylor, you have a point, so we just don't have that uh, those minutes in front of us right now. So we'll we'll look at that and yeah, yeah I've read be updated. I, I I I don't know I don't know what happened, but what it, 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 let's say we are moving forward. The, the town hall seems like a great opportunity not to just to have a yes no vote, but to actually put forth a recommendation to council that is comprehensive and factors in all the benefits that we can clearly show vacation rental owners for being part of the T bid, and then there won't be a backlash for the 306 versus 38 people that are in that room. So if we if we are listening to input in the same way that, let's say, a GPAC meeting does for uh, the, the city's general plan and where there's post-it notes about this is what we want, this is what our concerns are, then we hear that and it's not a, an us against them situation. We actually put forth a multi-page recommendation to city council so city council has something to say to anyone who's publicly commenting on the downside of the T-bid. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I just It doesn't negate that we had a vote. Right, and I, and we should not be That's voting correct. on things so. officially, and then not representing what we said we were going to do. That's correct. Agreed. And Sean, well said. That effectively is the reason for the town hall to keep this moving. I'd like to open up. Is there any further discussion board? I want to open up to public comment. I, I'm, I'm with you, Taylor. Is, is there any public comment in the audience today? So, um, good morning. My name is Andy Hamp. My family owns and operates Cypress RV and Mobile Home Park in Morro Bay. Doug Clausen from Morro Dunes wanted to join me this morning, but unfortunately had too many trailers to spot and has to get it done by check-in today. So, um, I can answer some of your questions right off the bat. There's six of us. There's 250 vacation rentals and 40 motels, so talk about imbalance, but I'll get there a bit later. So I don't know if you're aware, because we do have a new generation of staff up here and, uh, and board members as well, but the RV parks in Morro Bay have vehemently opposed the T-bits, primarily because we're a completely different animal than either the hotels or vacation rentals. And please quit talking about RVs and vacation rentals in the same breath. And after our discussion, I think you'll understand why. So for a bit of history, after many excruciating meetings, we were finally excluded from the county's first T-bid attempt in 2006. Back then, it helped that we had the full backing of the Morro Bay City Council to get us out. We were thankfully excluded from the 2009 City T-bid, probably because of our history of opposition, and that was at that time put together by Hoteliers for Hoteliers. Then in 2015, to 15, despite the fact that every Morro Bay RV park was opposed, we were dragged into the county T-bit. We now pay 1% for no measurable, and I repeat, no measurable benefit. Two years and thousands of dollars later, we have listing on a website that few of any RV, RVers use. Also frustrating is the fact that around 36 parks, in the, there are 36 parks in the county, but only 10 pay into the county T-bit. Six of those are in Morro Bay. For various legal and technical reasons, 26 parks are exempt from paying either TOT or TBID assessments. These include every private park and county jurisdiction, state parks, county parks, and federal parks. So that means that the Morro Bay, six Morro Bay parks are at 11% rate disadvantage compared to eight parks that are all in our immediate neighborhood, such as Rancho Colina, Bella Vista, Morro Bay State Park, Morro Strand State Park, Montana de Oro, El Choro, Cerro Alto, and Camp San Luis. All of these will never pay into any assessment. If we get sucked into the Morro Bay T-bid, it's a 14% disadvantage. No hotel has this kind of situation. And given the situation, we don't see how a T-bit can do marketing that only benefits us as the law requires and not benefit all the other parks in and around city limits. Besides that, the assessments far outweigh any benefits. The return is simply not there. The 1% county assessment is more than some of us have ever spent on our marketing efforts. That's because RV customer behavior, market trends, competitive environment, economics are all substantially different than hotels and vacation rentals. Historically, revenues for the town's parks have been much less cyclical than that of the hotel industry, even during a recession. Since 2005, we had a year-to-year -to -year TOT increases. 08, there was one year when it was minus 0.6%, almost a rounding error. 
The RV, RV parks have done fine without a T-bit and they will continue to do so. Sufficient numbers of RVers have been coming to the coast way before the T-bit was able to spend hundreds of thousands in marketing and promotion. I heard some discussion in a TBID meeting tape that revenues in parks in 2015 and 2016 were up because of all the marketing that the TBID has done. I suppose we could argue this point until we are blue in the face, but the RV park industry is booming across the country. RV unit sales have had record growth over the last two years, 10 and 15 percent. Woodall's Campground Management, a trade magazine, recently reported that the number of new campers is estimated to have increased by 3.4 million households in 2014. The Morro Bay T-bit has not driven this growth. Another aspect that differentiates, uh, differentiates our businesses from that of the hotel and vacation rental business is sheer numbers. RVers can easily find the few parks and know exactly where to look. If you Google Morro Bay RV parks, a small number pops up. If you do that with hotels or vacation rentals, the vacationer is inundated with properties. There are over 1,200 plus heads and best business businesses in Slow County. We just heard 250 vacation rentals in Morro Bay, 38 hotels. We have a completely different competitive structure. As such, the RV parks don't have a need for Expedia or other booking sites and their horrendous fees. We don't need a jackrabbit or discount promotions, fortunately. Most private parks don't even have online booking. This is in part, this in part has to do with the non-generic nature of our customers. Hotels put humans in beds, we put rigs from say 15 to 45 plus feet in spaces. And while beds fit most humans, this is far from the case for our B, B parks. There is great variability in site rig fit and this is still best handled by phone and most RVers know this. And speaking of numbers, as I said, there are only six of us and many more of you. With our 7% share, we can never ever outvote the hotels. Matter of fact, we are blatantly alert, alerted to this during city council and TBID meetings, even this morning, when it was clearly pointed out that if we can't entice them to join, then we can, quote, force them. Those are, you know, those sound like mafia tactics, if you ask me. So given all that Mr. I've just Hamp talked about, uh, I sorry. hope you can Which understand our opposition. Now, I know we're part of the tourism industry. I just want to ask you a quick question, yes. please. Yes. Which uh, you, you were quoting, and yes. I appreciate that. And there's a lot of discussion up here, so forgive yes. us if we said something that was inappropriate. But which one of us said, force them in? It's come up, in, look at the tapes. In city council meetings, come up with the old business manager. This morning, though. You well, said, it said there was a vote to have the. It wasn't said force this morning. I apologize, but okay. you know, evidently there was a force, a vote taken to include the RV parks, and that was the question of discussion just a few minutes ago, right? Of course. Uh, so now, th this, as you mentioned at the first part of your um, yes, and this is this is well written. So thank you for spending the time on it. Open dialogue is a very important thing to us, but you did also note that this is effectively a relatively new generation of board members yes, up here. Yes, and, and that's so I think why we felt compelled to have the discussion. Exactly. And I would like to point out, you know, we are part of the tourism industry, I realize that, but so are the restaurants, the boat rentals, um, the restaurants, and all these are not assessed. So. Our plea is that we look at things like maybe a volunteer membership program. I think SlowCal is something like that where you know you can pay a due like the Chamber of Commerce and participate that way, but not a heavy-handed assessment. We'd be willing to work together on that, but not the TBIT. Thanks for having the opportunity to speak. Sure. And I didn't want to cut you off in your speech. Just you, you mentioned a quote in there, and I wanted to drill down into who said that and how it was said. The word force has been used, and um, I can even probably get you what dates that okay. it was. And I didn't want you to cut you off. If you're... Are you? Pardon me? If you're still in the middle of your. See, I thought you were calling my three minutes. That's why I kind of got in a rush. No. <laughs> it has also been the three minutes, yes, but. But, uh, you know, uh, we've, like I said, we've, um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to hang around and answer that. But I just wanted to give you folks a background because you are new. You know, Joe knows all about this and, um, and knows that I think RV parks are a bit different than, than most of what you guys have been discussing. Sure. Different economics, different competitors. And we're outnumbered. You know, we see this in the county t -bit. You know, we can't even get the people to go to the, because we're so small. You know, there's only 10 of us. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, again, board, thank do you, you have for any your, I, comments. I, I, know that, I know that I, as the longest standing board member up here, because um, I've been on this board the longest. I've been up here since Joan and I were on the former model. And I know that Joan, as a friend of mine, has educated me more on this than I ever thought I'd be educated. And um, democracy is so important. And I think that you speaking for yourself and your business is the basis of our country. And uh, 
I don't disagree with what you're saying at all. Um, but I do think that both of us, especially if we're talking about generations and such, um, realize that the future is coming and the past is gone. And we as a city need to look at it, the future together. So having these discussions, however long the discussions take, is necessary. So I, I hope you feel that. Yeah, you know, maybe we've been a bit jaded. This is like cycle number four. And we've seen this film before. I'm sorry, but, you know, um, there's workshops. You know, there's town hall meetings. And then, you know, there's only a handful of us, hundreds of others. And we've gotten rolled over, quite frankly. So I hope you understand that. You know, there's only 7% of the share of the vote. It doesn't seem fair. I'm not disagreeing with you. Know, you know, talking about democracy, for example. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or? Yeah. Any other questions, of course, for Mr. Hemp? Did I spell your last name correctly? H H A M P. H A M P. Okay. Thank you for your Thank public you. comment very much. Is there any further public comment out there? Good morning. My name is Joan Solu, and I am a former TBID member. So I can go back and give you a little bit of conversation back to the days of yore when we were all standing here as individual hoteliers trying to decide on this. Before I go any further, I agree with Sean and Taylor. Your vote, the language of your vote that you took administratively belongs in that document that you're sending to the vacation rentals. Because what Andy is saying, what's so important here is that this, if this happens, this does not have to be structured under your TBID, under your hotel, your TBID that you currently act under. Why would a city want to do that? Because it's easy and it's a low hanging fruit way to get the job done. Because the hoteliers can walk out in front and whenever you're in front of the crowd leading, there's somebody looking at your back, right? So back behind you are the vacation rental revenues and the RV park revenues, and you as hoteliers, you can sweep them in. But is that the right thing to do? Independently, this TBID can stand alone. And administratively, the city can walk through workshops and conversation, and they can have a TBID that stands alone for vacation rentals, and they can have a TBID that stands alone for RV parks, if the RV parks want to vote for that, and if the vacation rentals want to vote for that. Administratively, it's easier to put it on this TBID because you're sweeping it in. And I have used the word force, Andy, because I don't believe in forcing somebody to do something against their will. I think that people should see value in what's being done. And if, if we really believe that there's value there, then we should be able to show that value in such a clear and strong picture that there would be no argument against that, period. And if we can't provide that information, those facts, get that communication together, just like with marketing, be compelling with that communication, and reach the target audience, then they're probably not going to vote for it. Period. So I have used the word force because I'm against force. I've never wanted to force anybody in to this T-bid. I think you, and I don't know what that language was of your previous vote. Sean and Taylor are right. You probably need to know what that is because for me, I would say to you, have the city walk it through and see if it can stand alone because who knows, guess what? Maybe the vacation rentals are gonna say yes and maybe they're not gonna to wanna to be structured under the 89 Act, which is year on year on year. Maybe they're gonna to wanna to be structured under, what is it, the 94 Act, that 92-94 Act, that allows them to be a five year, a 10 year, or a 40 year like San Diego TBID. So guess what? There's a lot of ways to skin the cat, folks. And one of, one of the main things that I can tell you right now is you are going to hear a conversation about force. Because he's right. There's 250 vacation rentals. But guess what? The community services directors here in the audience today. But 
we don't have a, va it's not his fault, but we as a city don't even have a vacation rental policy that the vacation rentals are clearly acting under. Do you have the cart out in front or the horse? That's what we need to figure out. So I think the workshop is a great first step, but I think we need to be clear at that workshop and clear in the information that we put out, guys, that it doesn't necessarily have to be under this T-bid. It could be a 1% and it could be a five-year deal. It could be a 2% and it could be an 18-month deal. You know, a, there's a lot of talks in America and democracy right now about a deal. Well, a deal is a deal, right? It's, whether it's a handshake or a contract, you know, it's only good if both of you leave going, ah, I could have done a little bit better, right? Both parties always should feel that way for a good deal. I could have done a little bit better, but he got a fair shake, and I think I did too. So what's fair for our community? That's what you need to be asking yourself. Can you tell me when you think this vote took place? Because I, Are we beating the... I mean, because well, here's where I'm looking yeah. at. I have a January uh, minutes in front of me, and there's a vote to delay moving forward. Um, I, and I can get you the verbiage on that, if that will help everyone move forward. I, I, I was... Uh, my first meeting, I think, was uh, Feb February. It was, I want to say, April-ish. I, so I don't know if it was March, April, or May, but it took place um, a little bit later than January. But okay. But moving forward, town hall communication, October twenty fourth. Is there any further public comment? All right. No motion required. This is a receive and file board. Do we all satiated on this topic? City manager, satisfied. Okay. Moving on. on. Let's talk about art. <laughs> B4, Highway 1 Outdoor Board Concepts, presented by our tourism manager, and as part of the agenda packet is an illustration, I want to say, of five concepts for us to consider here today. And are we looking for a motion on this? Or I, I suppose you'll start to explain how you will. Sure, let me forward. let me walk through it. So Please. I don't know if you are all familiar with this board. If you're driving from San Luis out to Morro Bay, it sits on the right side, down kind of in a ditch. I uh, put some photos in your packet that you'll see. It sits kind of low. There's bushes that during the winter grow up, and the owner's pretty good about keeping them trimmed for us, but this is a private property. It's an oversized board, which is good. The bad side of, of an oversized board, it's very expensive to change out. So this board has been up for quite a while. It has not been changed since I've been here. It did have extensions above the board that had icons for um, things in Morro Bay like gas and food and it had um, a note that said next six exits. So that has fallen down from the wind. So at the very least I, I will have to change that out. We don't if you like the creative and you don't want to change it you don't want the expense right now. We don't have to but um, I would like to see it changed. What I um, don't like about the current board is picture it as very strong Morro Bay I don't see. It's very hard for me to see Morro Bay on that board as you're driving by. It's a very quick read. Um, the top photo is about 10 seconds before you hit the board and as you can see it's just it's very difficult to read. So I'd like to see that changed out and add a new um, extension above the board and the new extension that I'm recommending is to say exit Morro Bay Boulevard to drive people to the center of town instead of say next six exits. And then um, cost wise I, I put down the cost for you so you can see how they run. The printing of the board is two thousand dollars. The extension is another five hundred. Installation of the whole new flex and the extension is eight hundred and five dollars. Reflective tape we don't have to do but there is no illumination on that board at night. So if we want to have a better read I, th I think it's worth the money is to add the reflective tape. It's fourteen sixty-two. So, total cost to change out this flex will be four thousand seven hundred seventy-eight dollars. Looking at the different creatives that they uh, put together, so the you see the dark blue is that's a little extension on top. They'll say exit Morro Bay Boulevard, and so um, we just did some real clean creative kept Morro Bay on top of the of the creative. So if the bushes grow up, or if you're you can't see down in that ditch, you can still read Morro Bay. Um, there's a couple different ones. Come ashore. 
you ought to be there. I like this layout the best. I like the three organic photos on the left side. I think they read much better than um, the previous board where they're squared on the left side. I just, for some reason, it stands out better to me. You'll be hooked. The photos, just so you know, these are just mock-ups right now. We can um, change out the photos, but just trying to show some different things that Morro Bay has to offer. And then the last one is come ashore, moving um, that, you know, switching over, putting the extension on the left side instead of the right side of the board, which is a nice change. And then drop anchor in Morro Bay with the three photos again on the, on the left side. So just options for you guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Yeah, I, I agree with the three uh, the three photo arrangement, but I think maybe flipping it. Uh, my vote would be uh, on the back side, the the uh, left hand writing, which is the top left corner, which is what you see when you're driving, and then the three photo layout on the right hand side, um, kind of combining those two. Oh, and come ashore was my. Uh, I like the of, of the three. Just. A consideration and a thought here. Uh, I know that there's been, <coughs> excuse me, a concern around the area that we have multiple different branding campaigns, different logos, and so forth. Uh, it feels to me that we are starting to create a slogan here on a billboard, and shouldn't this tie back into a greater campaign theme with the website and so forth, a consistent branding? I haven't really seen these ideas anywhere else. It's really a headline, Aaron. It's not a positioning statement. There hasn't been any decision made on a new logo or new tagline. So um, that's why I had been waiting was to see if um, that those would go to city council. They have not yet. So I think we need to change the flex. Honestly, I think it needs to be dealt with. Um, but these are just headlines. I would consider these headlines. But isn't it an opportunity? Uh, it's a branding effort, effectively, for the town. So we, we still don't have a specific slogan dialed in, a tagline, if you will. That's right. I mean, we can use as a headline, put life on coast. And we can do that if you'd, like, if you'd be more comfortable doing that and just use it as a headline. Jen, so this is basically this little slogan or whatever saying is just the one replacing picture it, right? Because I see I see picture it all the time, and again, picture it doesn't necessarily describe Morro Bay. It's just a, and I think this goes back to what we were discussing earlier about how forms and media are changing. You know, Facebook, you got to put something new up every day. I mean, right. maybe we don't just need one main slogan on every single billboard. Maybe we need to change it all the time. Um, that's how I'm running with this. Is am I we're in the white ballpark here? You are. Thanks. So outdoor boards are what's called a secondary medium. They are supposed to support what you already know or you've already heard or seen as far as knowing about Morro Bay. So this needs to be a very quick read, something super short that's going to catch your eye. The more important thing is exit Morro Bay Boulevard over anything else. That's what is really primary to me is get them off the road and on the right exit. So I go back to, I always struggle with this on our budget and all, and I would assume this would be coming out of the T-bid budget. And and our primary goal is to put heads and beds again. So to me, this seems like this is promoting the city of. Nobody's going to do that and stop and go, uh, maybe a few people will. Well, let's go explore that. Maybe we'll stay here tonight because most people make lodging choices in advance. So, um, again... But let's not it, undersell the walk-in. They do have. Okay. We, we, okay. You can, if, you, it's a no, it's a double yeah. digit percentage on walk-ins. Okay. Okay. Then maybe that. And so, do we change the thing to say drop, uh, you know, come ashore and stay a while, or something that would imply come stay, you know, encourage people to stay as well as just stop in and have lunch or whatever. Um, this is promoting the whole city of Morro Bay, and I think you're right. Even if it doesn't get the customer that day, if they do decide to stop and come explore, and they go, wow, this is a really cool town. We should come back here again. I, I agree there's value there, but I'm just wondering, is there anything we could do to put a little twist on it that would promote staying here? 
So I think this does, in a way, Maggie, is, is my gut on it because it's showing what you can get in Morro Bay. It shows that we have you know restaurants and fishing and sea life. The current board is strictly a day stop board. Picture it. It's telling you get off, take a photo, and get back on. And it drives me nuts that we're promoting a day a day stop. That's not what I want. So I need to get them off the road. Realize, I mean, once you pass Morro Bay, there's not a lot of you know food options. So getting them off for meals is a really good way to get them into our town. I really like that slogan right there. You're about to pass Morro Bay. You better stop here and stay. <laughs> I think I think I just rhymed yes. actually. I like the uh, the image on the left and the the three on the on the right. I think that makes sense as you know driving by that sign. I've always felt that it was a um, hey pull over take a picture and leave sign too. So I, I'm excited to get it back uh, and better. Drop anchor does elicit a spend the night, and you know so that's one thing that that I'd comment on. Um, and again, you know, we're, we are showing restaurants and food and things like that, which are great. However, they don't pay into it. Just making that comment. Um, but I like the uh, I like that image. I like the uh, exit Morro Bay Boulevard. I think that's smart to keep it simple. Um, MorroBay.org and Discover Morro Bay kind of gets washed out, but I see what you're doing. You're covering up the power plant with it. You're hiding a hiding a <laughs> hiding what intentional. You know, and even all your words are covering it up every single place, and that's okay. <laughs> anyway, that's just my comment. Jennifer, out of curiosity, what does the rental for the billboard cost? It's five hundred dollars a month. It's extremely reasonable. Okay. So I'm not hearing any board concern about overall branding. You're all okay with just. Picking a slogan, seat of our pants right here. I really like drop anchor. Okay. I, I do think encouraging heads in beds. Uh, as somebody, I live in San Luis Obispo, so I drive past this billboard almost every single day as I'm coming up the coast. Uh, my concern from seeing the current billboard up there, which is really, I agree, the it is one image, and I have pretty good eyes and see it all the time, so I can understand it. My concern is any of these with these smaller pictures, being the L, uh, billboard is not really raised, it's a bit of a distance from the road. I don't think any of these smaller pictures are going to be um, comprehensible to a driver at 65. I just don't. I think that one, it's one image would be, frankly, the way to go than any of these lesser ones. I love the idea that they express. I just don't think it'll be comprehensible at that speed to a new set of eyes personal opinion so, so so hypothetically then maybe looking at that third choice where it just has one image if you ignore the ones on the left something more in that ballpark or? I think that frankly just the bay the rock without the additional pictures it's one billboard is not a website uh, is a beautiful shot and explains the brand because if you can picture that can I mean what is that furry thing on the top right corner and that dude is holding what in the middle picture, and I think that that, what? Right. The I've, photos are just for mock-up. They're not the final photos. Yeah. But, yeah, we could take, like, that look, just enlarge the overall bay photo. I think the aerial the small shot three is ones. breathtaking. Change the headline to drop anchor instead of come ashore. We could let the board vote, perhaps, to give you a feel and slogan, but I, I think visually I'd feel very strong. Let's, let's abandon the additional pictures. I don't think it'll be recognizable. And, but our opinion is just people as well. Board co public comment on any of this? I was going to say, j your goal with the smaller pictures is to show the different pieces of Morro Bay, why you should stay in Morro Bay, right? Right, and that right. there is more than just the rock. And I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. I just, yeah. I drive past the billboard every day. I don't think the I was, average set of eyes is going to be able to. For this, for this kind of stuff, for me, being the way I am. I, I go back to, okay, I, we hired a marketing company. Why did we hire that marketing company? What are the details of that marketing company, which is the one we chose? So for me, our marketing company really sold me on that, uh, that whole thing they did with it's this big, right? And so for me, when I look back, every time I think about marketing, okay, why did I choose that marketing company? It's because of this big. So what was it about that that got us all on the, bo on the boat, right? And part of that marketing pitch it wasn't just the sexy slogan. It was the individual picture of the different people that make Morro Bay. So, like, if you're trying to show different things of Morro Bay, instead of showing, like, 
all the otters and all the boating? What if it was just like a picture of the different types of people? Like, here's a fisherman, here's a restauranter. You know, it's real simple to see an individual picture of a person, and then that represents a whole genre of Morro Bay. Like a chef. Well, chef, that means restaurants. A fisherman, that means the harbor. You know what I mean? So an individual is maybe better than the picture of the actual details. That's why I like that big, that their pitch. That's my opinion. You know, Taylor, the only thought that I have on that for you is when I think about Highway 1 and Morro Bay is you can't see anything about Morro Bay when you're passing Morro Bay Boulevard. I mean, you just don't. I mean, it just looks like a hill and you're going over it. It doesn't look like the water's there until you get, you know, two exits down. So, I mean, that's a disadvantage for us, and that's why I like the idea of having a visual shot so people realize, you know, what they're passing before they pass it. How often do we change this billboard? Maybe once a year. It's very expensive. So if we change it more often, we could have more pictures. But It's just so much money, expensive. Taylor. Is there so, a cheaper way of doing the billboard? No, because it's so oversized. Yeah. I would like to open it up to public comment. If the, Does the board have any further discussion or comment? No. Um, one quick thought I had as well. I do love distinguishing exit Morro Bay Boulevard. It's our downtown. But does this, since we are represent the constituency at a whole, is that directing traffic away from other members of our constituency? I believe in giving guests clear direction. Board, you see what I'm saying? It really does. So why don't we go back and, and try to rework these based on your comments? I think you've all given very good comments and yeah. come back with um, another set of creative. Because like, there are constituents on further exits. Absolutely. And I hate Absolutely. to abandon them completely. Is the top panel um, restricted to just that one size, or can it go across the entire? It's restricted. It's restricted. Yeah. OK, That's I was just curious long. if it could say, you know, exit Morro Bay Boulevard and, 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 you know, the next, next you know, and next three X or something. Yeah. But it's not the next three exits. You have South Bay, and you have the one before. You have two exits before you get to Morro Bay Boulevard. Yeah. Board, if you're satisfied, let's open up to public comment. Okay, We'd I just love to hear what the community yeah. has said. And, and you had commented about no. I I actually feel like I li I, I just want to make a counterpoint that that just people see so many pictures of just the rock and just the harbor that even though it might you make a good point about it, Aaron, that it might not be readily comprehensible to them as they go by it at 65. But to me, I'd like to do. I would actually like to include one or two or even three pictures that represent other aspects of it because um, I just feel like everybody sees a rock and that may not be compelling enough but what we can when you do the rework if there's anything that can make those somehow pop more yeah that would be my vote so now I'm done thank you public comment uh, the only thing I've got to add is that yeah. you and I and all of us see it all the time yeah. think about the guest that's just driving up highway one for the very first time yeah. what what are they you know over the second or third or fourth time what's going to entice them to get off and stay and so uh, again we all see the rock all the time you know we're blessed with that but we need to think about what is that guest driving down the road going to see? If they're a, they're coming from a whole different perspective, they could be from a different country. You know, they maybe they're just like, wow, this is their first time on the road. Let's get them to pull off and stay. So it's funny when you look at that image. That's an indication how spoiled we are. I mean, really, look at that main shot of the rock. Look at the harbor and say, oh, that thing. It's not doing the job, right? Public comment. Good morning, Joan Solu. Um, and that's my view from work, so yeah, I love the view. Um, branding, 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 branding. I agree with Aaron. I don't like the word put, but life on coast, if we're, if you've recommended that you move in that direction, I don't see anything wrong with beginning that investment here. If the city council later says they're not in love with that, that also means that they're not in love with that one and they're not in love with Discover because they're looking to change it. But we know that life on coast is much more of an 
emotional, it can receive much more of an emotional response than discover. I would say put life on coast up there. That would be my personal opinion to you. Charlie, it might be very important to you the reason why that billboard said exit next six exits. Really super important to you. Google directions from San Luis Obispo to the inn at Morro Bay. The exit it gets you off of is South Bay Boulevard. You are probably the largest single hotel in Morro Bay at 99 rooms, and you are only the only full-service hotel. So remember, this is about the customer. And while some in the community may think that saying exit Morro Bay Boulevard and going straight into the middle of town is the best thing for town, it very well can be in terms of putting folks right into the center of town. But as a guest, if you've Googled directions to the inn at Morro Bay, for example, and you're coming in and it says Morro Bay, Morro Bay Boulevard, and your spouse is going, oh, it's Morro Bay Boulevard is our exit, but you've got directions telling you to get off at South Bay. You're conflicting yourself. So I think we need to be very careful with what we do up there. We need to recognize that we've got a lot of hotels at Highway 41 and Main Street, right? We have two of our large, we have our second largest hotel out there, 75 rooms, Motel 6. And then we get out to the Best Western, up in, in North Morro Bay, and we're into about our fourth largest hotel, fifth largest hotel. And we do have restaurants out there. I know it's not a lot, but we do have businesses out there that are open for business. So whether you say exit Morro Bay Boulevard and the following five exits or whatever it is you do there, I, I would ask you to compel yourselves to really think about the user and how you're asking them to see Morro Bay and connect with that. And in terms of the bushes, you gotta cut the bushes before you put the new skin up, so you gotta work with the folks. But again, back to your branding, your branding, your branding. If it's gonna be life on coast, then it should probably be up there, and I would ditch the logo altogether because you don't know if that's what you're gonna stick with over the next, and I would double the size of morrowbay.org because that's where we want them to book rooms and hotel reservations and look, you know, now they need a place for ice and they're driving up to Big Sur, so have them stop here. And gas stations and everything else. Morrowbay.org, double the size. You've got about three seconds to reach your user on this. I almost think that the top exit Morro Bay Boulevard could be morrowbay.org. You know, that's up to you guys. I'm just giving you my two cents. But I honestly, I think you need to consider the exits. I think you need to consider the slogan. I think you could ditch the logo. They don't care about the logo. They really don't care about the logo. They're looking for quick, quick, quick information. Very quick information. And feel fortunate that it's going to cost you more money and that's double the size. Because in the location it's in, you need that size. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any further public comment? Seeing none, board, I think we're through with our discussion on this. Yes, a lot of input here today. Sounds like the overall direction to our tourism manager is going to be going back to creative, taking a lot of these suggestions, and let's revisit this in next month's meeting, hopefully with a conclusion. Because I agree, it's getting stale. It's been up there for quite some time. Last item, B5, update on the Light of Boat Parade and the 12 Days of Christmas events with Terry Bayes. that vote one was it the April 12th meeting 
I think I, I have it in my file. It was April 12th that we did that. Because it was a weird one. We were discussing it with the Connie, and he had it as a receive and file. And then we went ahead and took a vote, I think. I think it was April 20th. I yeah, found it April school. 20th, but January 19th, it was delayed before that. So I think the timing, I think that was direction for the next fiscal year. But I have to go back. I'm looking at it on my phone. I, it's hard to... Right, because I think that it says, I mean, his plan was to receive and file. I remember it was weird, but we ended up having a vote, mm-hmm. and it was a majority vote. So, I mean, we definitely need to make sure we're not So sleeping. it's documented Correct. In, the, in his process. But it was the April 12th right. meeting. I have April 20th. You have the 12th? I, don't, I have the agenda as the April 12th. Tw- All right, guys. Sorry. After the meeting, chat about it. We are on to the next item. Ms. Bayes, Hi. please. Hello, I'm Terry Bayes. Let's talk Christmas. <laughs> I am the event coordinator for the 12 Days of Christmas and the Lighted Boat Parade. And in the last month, we've kind of put the whole schedule together. Some of these are set in stone. Some of them are not. So forgive me when I speak as if it's already a done deal because I'm new to this city. So I'm getting as much as done as I can. So day f- one, which is December 1st, is going to be the lighted boat cruise. We have six boats currently um, that are being sponsored by six different restaurants. They will just be decorated and just cruising the waterfront in a very um, informal way. It's, um, the Harbor Patrol has said that they're fine to just do it as long as we keep it under 10 boats. Um, so that will be day one. Day two will be the actual lighted boat parade. We're going to be doing the judges on the waterfront in street that's, um, uh, that's front and Embarcadero. And um, it'll be from six to eight. The very first boat is gonna be the Papagayo. We're gonna have a very dramatic light tree lighting on um, the top of that boat. So everybody will be dark and then the Papagayo will come and we're gonna light the Christmas trees. Um, we do have cash elements or cash prizes for everybody this year. So we have $400 for first prize, $250 for second, and $100 for third. We are charging a $20 entry free this year, but I have gotten about $50 in gift certificates from boat type of places like Harbor Freight and um, uh, West Marine. So I, the reason I wanted to do a, a um, and entry fees because we need them with skin in the game. If they don't put at least $20 down, then they may just drink rum instead of coming out to the parade. So um, at the same time <laughs> on there, we will have a Santa house. We'll have hot cocoa. Um, all of the, the vendors that we'll be having there will be kind of homemade kind of Christmas type of thing. So we don't take away from any of the restaurants or businesses that we're surrounding. Um, and then we also have the white cap band. We'll be playing Christmas carols the whole time. Um, so on that same day, what we're trying to do is do a simultaneous tree lighting because Morro Bay doesn't have a lot of Christmas decorations, as I've found. So, um, so far we have the we have confirmed that the harbor is going to do a crab tree um, uh, tree right at the tea pair. We're going to have the one tree that's up at City Park, and now we're working on getting a, some simulation of a crab pot tree in both the Anchor Park and somewhere in downtown. Um, The crab pots, while they're visually stimulating, are really hard for them to move around. So we have to might make a fake crab pot tree for the two areas in downtown and Anchor Park. And also, well, I was I'm pretty excited about this. I have um, gotten a commitment from Rotary. Um, They are going to build you a permanent Santa house. So um, it will be permanent. So you will have it every year. It will be on that little patch of what used to be grass by the chessboard. Um, every night, Santa will be there from 6 to 8, so we can say Santa's here every night for 12 days. Um, during the other activities, Santa will move around. There'll be a little note, come find Santa where else we'll be. Um, they are buying a shed, so we don't have to go through too much approval. So they're buying an existing shed and decorating it, and with the hope of that they can turn it into a Easter house during Easter or a haunted house, however else you want to brand it. Rotary's building it. The city is going to store it for them, so it's really a good thing for everybody. Day three is a paddle parade, so that will be non-motorized boats. We will be at the Tidelands Park. Um, same cash prizes. Um, and then on the land, we're going to have paper boat building. So we'll have the supplies that can build boats and then put them in a trough and see if they float. Um, we'll also have a bunch of other friends from family-friendly activities. 
That is from 1 to 4. So Santa will be there, and then he'll go back to his house on the chessboard. Uh, day four through seven, Monday through Thursday, we're just going to be doing special discounts and gifts to be given out by participating real retailers. Um, everybody's, the retailers are going to be able to choose retailers, restaurants, services, can be able to choose whatever they want. We're not going to force any, like, you know, 20% discount. Everybody's going to give what they need to give. Those that want to be more invested are going to be doing um, more things. There's also the 12 days that Santa's there in um, the house. That's sponsorable, so we, I think we have five nights that are paid for, so they're giving the gifts that Santa gives to the kids when he sits on his lap. Um, and then the tall ships will be here. From, one gets here on um, November 26th, and the other one gets here on December 3rd. But the tall ships will be there. They'll be um, open for free tours. On Friday, December 8th, we're doing a Santa crawl. A Santa crawl is basically a pub crawl, but everybody has to dance, dress like Santa. For those without ABC licenses, we're going to be putting a winemaker or a brewer in the restaurant. So say in the candy shop, we're going to put a, a winemaker in the back, and so people will come in dressed as Santa. Hopefully everybody in the shop is dressed like Santa too. I will allow ugly Christmas sweaters, but I want everybody to look as much like a Yuletide as we can possibly get. Um, we'll be giving out passports at two different starting locations, one in downtown and one in the Embarcadero. The passports have everybody that is um, participating. So the people come in, they get, their pa they get their passport stamped. Now, they don't have to drink. They can just do this game of going to each of the places. And then that's putting it back into a bowl for a grand prize that's a night or two at one of the hotels. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did a lot in a month. <laughs> I was pretty surprised. So on December 9th, we're going to have the Gingerbread House competition. It's going to be at the Inamoro Bay. So individuals, chefs, anybody who wants to can build a gingerbread house. We're going to put them all at the Inamoro Bay. And then for one or two days, people can come and just view them. But the actual viewing and judging will be on um, December 9th from 1 to 4. Um, there'll be a people's choice and there'll be a judge's choice on the gingerbread houses. December 9th, we've got the Battle Sail program, and that's the two tall ships. You can go out. This will cost people money. Everything else is free. Um, for $42 to $79, and they go out, and they, sh they have a full-on war. They shoot things at each other, and it's a very cool thing. So we've got two dates to do that on both um, December 9th, and then they're going to do it again on December 10th if we can fill it up. But we can take about 70 people to go out there and do that. And you don't have to dress for Santa like this for this one. <laughs> and then on December 10th, we've got snow at Tidelands Park. We're going to have two patches of snow, one that's going to be for the, large, the older kids that will be on a slope, and then one a smaller patch for the little kids so we're not pounding them and running them over. Um, in addition to that, we'll have an Elf on the Shelf contest. For those of you that don't have small children at home, Elf on the Shelf is a new thing where that little shelf right, that little elf right there, you, he sits on the shelf for the 12 days of Christmas, and he reports back to Santa whether the kids are being good or not. But the elf gets into shenanigans every single night. And so mom and dad have to do these strange things with the elf. Like, for example, he pours out all the cereal and then he's doing um, snow angels in it. So what we're doing is having the parents bring their elf and show their most creative what he's gotten into, what kind of trouble he's gotten into. So it's just a visual display of Christmas. People will have it up there for four hours and they take their, shelf, their elf back home. And then on um, 11, we're going to have bounce back shopping. So that basically is you spend $25 in this shop and you come back on December 18th through 25th and you get $25 off of, we still haven't the details of it, but it's basically a really strong um, retail program for bouncing back. So you spend this money now and you get even more of it to spend if you come back for that week before Christmas. And the last day is goodbye to Santa. So we're going to put Santa on a boat. I'm, I've got my fingers crossed on which boat it is. We're going to have everybody waving to him, and when he goes around the rock, we're going to shoot a big flare into the sky so it looks like Santa's going up into the North Pole. So that's the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> so here's our sponsorship po possibilities. Um, we're keeping it low, but um, it's to, for, to be a platinum one, which means you sponsor the whole thing, is uh, only $2,000 this year because we're running out of time. I have that out to about six businesses that have never been involved with um, this before, so hopefully somebody said yes. And then we 
have the business sponsor opportunities. Um, two of them have already been sold. And then the business opportunities, that's just basically if they want to be more involved with, like, they want to be um, sponsor the Santa House or they want to do any of that type of stuff. And then we also have nonprofit vendor opportunities. So on the, all the cocos and the free, uh, or all the things that we'll be selling, the little sweet Christmas stuff, those are all going to go to non nonprofit vendors. So I'm looking for as many of those that would like to participate. That's it. That's all. Any questions? <laughs> I just, uh, Terry? Yes. Um, oh, I'm I know sorry. That Did I, I did not introduce myself? Okay. No, that was my way of saying your name. Um, the next week is the Central Coast Writers Conference. Yes, and you're on that too. Uh, yes, that is my event. So I'm you're really. To, I'm supposed to be at KSBY at 11:30. Yeah, you're so. really working double time for us, I aren't know. you? <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, thank you for coming out today, and thank you for everything you're doing for Morro Bay. I mean, we are paying you, but thank you, and uh, your attention to detail and your thoughtfulness is really noted from my perspective. And I thank just. You. Pat on the back, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I was, everybody was, when I approached everybody the first, the first time, it was kind of like, who is this interloper? And then I just like, I'm just here to make your lives easier. I'm just here to try to organize everything so it's all one complete package. And so everybody's been awesome once they get past the who is she and why is she here? <laughs> Yes, uh, this looks amazing. It's a great uh, effort. I'd love to see what plays out. But noting you have to be at KSBI in 25 minutes. Yes, I do. <laughs> then I know. <laughs> I'm good. Then say goodbye. <laughs> I won't. We love this effort. This looks amazing. All We're right. very, very excited to see what plays so out. So, as much of you that can help me get the word out for nonprofits okay. and business sponsors, that would be awesome because I am not a part of the city. I don't know. Well, I will by the end of the month know most people. But um, if you can spread the word, that would be really awesome. And just call me, but just not next week. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Baez. All right. Yep. Question to you on this. Are, are, is mental marketing already beginning to count this good? Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments, board? We're satisfied. All right, last item on the agenda. Do we want to declare any future items we would like to see or discussions? Um, were we, I, I had, I'm going to voice my same request from last time. We had talked about uh, discussing the sign ordinance, right? Uh, and how it affects the leisure, I mean, that the hotel industry specifically. Um, I thought the Joan Solu's distinct point about neon signs was really interesting. I mean, how can you remove neon signs from the idea of hotels? Like, the, you know what I mean? That, that was a great point. Um, so we should, definitely should discuss that. and or something. Wasn't that the city council meeting that's already passed? Well, I, I don't know. I, yes, we had talked about talking about it amongst us as the Tourism Bureau, how it affects hoteliers. Um, sure. That never happened. Um, but uh, I thought she made some great points, and it's my job to say it. So you would like uh, to formulate this, you would like an update on what happened with the sign ordinance? I sure would. I'd like to know how it affects the hotel industry, okay. and it, at the same time, give public comment for the... I mean, I'd like the hoteliers to be able to speak their opinion on the sign to I like us. It. Okay. Let's air the conversation. Yeah. Very good point. Thank you. Anybody else like to declare a future item they'd like to see? Sean? Well, go the, for it. Uh, what day of the week? October 24th is... is uh, Tuesday. So that means we're meeting the, the Thursday before that town hall meeting. Is that correct? Maybe we can just get here an update from uh, how, how that workshop is going to work and be facilitated. On, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And if you have any ideas, feel free to email me individually. Let me know, hey, we should throw it this way or, or hold it this way. You know, something I saw on TV, let's do this. So Sure. Thanks. Good idea. Anybody else? Seeing no future items to declare, we will... De a mid-swing, Jen. Mid-swing. Could pull a muscle. D on your agenda announcements. Excuse me. D on the agenda announcements. Just real. Hmm? 
Just real quick, a couple announcements. So I mentioned that the wine promotion is currently going on. We can add hotels if anybody wants to be added to that. A couple other things. We have our concerts on the Bay coming up September 30th. We are at 210 tickets for that first concert. We could fill that space up to 500. We're shooting for between two and 300 this first um, concert. Team USA water polo team is coming in October 6th through the 8th to do their fall training in our brand new pool. So we'll be hosting them as a town. Surfboard Art Festival opens October 7th, so be aware that'll be around. And also Harbor Festival that same day. Light it, uh, the Lighthouse Century is the 14th of October. And again, on that same day is our second concerts on the Bay tickets, which are at 170 right now. So we're doing really good. Those are my announcements. Outstanding. Okay. All right. Any other items? Thank you, board. We will declare this meeting adjourned. It is 11.07 a.m.